Hey guys, have you ever struggled with trying to show existing loads in your Revit electrical projects? Well, then this is the video for you. I'm Rob and let's get right into it. So here we are in our Revit electrical tutorial project and we have already shown in previous videos how to model a future space such as this future retail. Now, in this case, this project actually was a brand new project, but if you're working on an existing building and you need to maintain some existing loads that are already there, you need to document those in your load summary somehow. Now, there's a few ways that that can be done, and I've tried uh, many different ways. One way is if you just have, for example, an existing metered load, um, whether it's a 30-day meter, or if you have uh, meter loads from the utility company that you can use, you can actually jump into a panel or a switchboard and just show that load on the switchboard. Now you can't just type it in. You probably experienced that. I can't type anything in here, but I can use the spare. So if I click on circuit five here and I go up to assign spare, I can actually edit that word. I can call this existing 30 day load. And I can put, I can actually edit the load, put the load in here. So let's say it's, um, you know, 27 kVA. That's in there and it adds up at the bottom, but under load classification, it just shows spare and it applies it at 100%. Typical existing loads like that, NEC makes us. Uh, you take those at 125%. So we have to apply the proper NEC rule. So you can't change that. And you can't change the category. So that way is not great if you need to itemize the load or apply demand factors. So let's get rid of that one and we can just remove that spare. So another way we can do this is to show the, the load like we did the future retail load in the model. Now, for example, let's say that this is not a future retail space. And let's get rid of that future load. We're going to call this an existing, existing area that has some load. Now, if we happen to know from as built or from going to the site and doing a survey of what's there, perhaps we know exactly what receptacles are there, what circuits they are on, what lights are there, things like that, motors and such. Um, we could put those in, label them as existing, connect them to, if we know what panel they're connected to, things like that. We could get very detailed about this. But in many cases, I found we end up with just a lump load that we need to represent in an existing panel. So this is the my approach to do that. I um, mean, we could use... And we haven't covered this in my beginner's videos yet, but we could use this phasing down at the bottom right of the properties. You can see there's a phasing situation here. You can have existing phase and new construction phase. You can use that to do demolition plans and you can turn things on and off, whether it's existing or demoed or new. That's a whole nother video to cover that in detail. But we could use that, but the issue I found of doing that, for example, if we create a separate plan that we'll call existing, well, then I have to change all of my view templates for this new stuff. I have to change it to show, just show new, not existing, and my normal it's set here, but normally this is set up to show existing and new. So, I mean, I could go through and do all that and monkey around with that. But what I have settled on is my approach is to just create a separate view. So, I'm just going to duplicate this view for the purposes of adding existing loads that will not be published. So, I just give this a, for me to align it up. I give it a number out here. I'll just say in lowercase because I use lowercase for non-published existing loads for non-published views. Now I have a separate plan called 
existing loads. I'm not going to publish this. This is purely for adding loads to my my load summaries, my panels, my, my switchboard. So this will just be for showing existing loads only. It's not going to be published. And the way I keep this from showing up on my actual published plans, because I'm not doing the, the individual receptacle loads here. I'm just using this as a lump sum area. I am going to create a separate work set, put my existing loads on that work set that only shows up in this existing plan. And it won't show up anywhere else, but the loads will show up on my, on my load summaries. So I will just go simply, and this assumes you do have a, a work shared, you know, view, a work shared project, excuse me. So let's just put a new work set in here. We do not want it visible in all views. Get rid of that first. And I try to proceed these usually with an E. So E, we're going to call this existing. Simple as that. And yes, let's make it the active work set for now. So we are now adding things to E existing. And then I will just decide what I want to put in here. Do I want, now if it was a panel, I would probably want that to show up in my new plans. But in this case, I'm just talking about an existing load that's already on an existing MDP that I don't need to show on the plans explicitly. So then I just go down and drag in my equipment connection. I can put it anywhere. Now you'll notice that it doesn't show up. It won't show up. And the reason for that is I did not include that work set in this plan. Now I need to get out of my power plan view template. And I'm just going to say none for this. I don't need a separate view template for a one-off plan. If I was doing this on multiple floors, then I might create a view template for my existing plan. But in this case, it's just one floor, one area. I don't need that. So what I will do is simply control this directly. Go to my work set. Let's find E existing. It says not visible is the default. Let's show it. So I've set up my visibility for this view. Now I can drag this in. And there we go. I can put this anywhere I want. Let's just put it in the middle of the room. I need to duplicate this and call it existing load. And if I had multiple existing loads, I might call this, um, call it existing retail. Okay. Looks like I'd already created one before, so we'll use that. And we can set the load classification to, there's a number of existing kinds of loads. We can go existing load, 30-day metered. I'm going to call it existing 30-day metered. And this applies a demand factor of 125%, which we couldn't do with that spare process. And then I'll give it a load. Um, I've gave it 24 kVA load, and this is not needed. We're not going to have this in a schedule and we're going to call this existing retail. Now for our purposes, we can just tag it with a leader to remember what this is. And then if you look back on our first floor, it doesn't show up, which is what we want. So now we can circuit this to wherever that load was circuited. Let's say it's on the MDB itself. So we're good there with MDB. And we want to call this existing, existing retail. Okay, and then we will, might as well circuit it, show a home run, show the, tag the home run. So we have a record of it on this plan. I've tried it before where all of this is just hidden somewhere and then I forget where it is. So I, I find it best to have my own existing plan, existing view like this, where I can get to it and modify it later, add to it later. So now it's not shown on the first floor plan. Let's look at our MDB. There it is. Existing retail shows up here. It shows up down in our load classification as existing load 30 day metered. The 125% demand factor is applied and it all gets added into my load. And there we go. So again, create the separate 
work set, create a separate view that's not published, get your existing load on here. And again, I can do this with individual receptacles too. Um, let me just show an example. You probably figured it out by now, but what I do is if I have an existing, I, I had a project where I had, you know, three panels of existing loads that I I knew circuit by circuit what they were. I had I had good photos of the panels. I had good information about what's in the field. So I was able to more a more detailed approach. I did not know exactly where they were in the building. So what I decided to do was show the circuits in the panels, but not the receptacles in the view. For example, what I did, let's take a standard receptacle, duplex receptacle up here, standard duplex receptacle, I can put it anywhere. It wants to be hosted on a wall, of course. So I'll just start hosting it on a wall. And I will edit this, duplicate. And what I, I called it by circuit number. Panel, um, and this, what do I have in this project? I think I have A1, A2. A1, circuit 25. And it was, let's say it was a load of 540. A125. So I have that load. So now I just want to circuit this to my panel, and I see that it's panel 1A. I, I got it backwards instead of A1, it's 1A. And I want to call this 1A20 existing load. Existing receptacles. And I'll give it a circuit and I will tag it. Now it's on 1A3. Let me tag this here also. I like to document this as much as possible. So I need to move this to 1A25. Simply jump into panel 1A and move it down to 25 like that. Now it shows up as an existing receptacle. And I could go back and should go back and even give this a load classification of existing. I can just call this existing load. Now, if I want to try to take my existing receptacles and apply 10K of, you know, the, the first 10K at 100%, the second at 50, I could do all that, but typically... I'm just going with connected loads on these. So that's how that works. And again, it does not show up because I'm doing this all in the existing work set. It does not show up here. It only shows up in my panel, existing load, and it will also show up MDB as existing load and carries through the entire system. So I hope that helps in your modeling of existing loads in your projects. Click a like if you liked it, and until next time.